Hello and welcome to this lesson on an introduction to electricity, which is part of the electricity topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at defining the key words of electricity. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the key terms of electrical circuits, differentiate between the terms EMF and potential difference, and understand the difference between the conventional current and the electron flow in electrical circuits. So in this lesson we're going to look at the following parts of the AQA A-level physics specification. 3.5.1.1, the basics of electricity. Now to understand the physics behind electricity, you must consider the electron. So electricity can be described by the behavior of electrons in materials. However, the behavior of an electron is determined by its charge. Now that's important because all mobile charged particles can produce the phenomena of electricity. Now electrons are the most common mobile charge carrier in the universe but they're not the only one. Now we can start to understand electricity by considering a metal wire. So we'll consider the inside of a metal wire such as copper. Now metal wires are full of free electrons. Now like we said before free electrons are examples of mobile charge carriers in electrical circuits. So free electrons are electrons which are not bound to any nucleus or ion and the greater the amount of mobile charge carriers is, the better the electrical conductor the material is. Now the free electron is a mobile charge carrier because they have a charge and they can move throughout the material. Now due to metallic bonding uh, the outer shell electrons in a metal become mobile charge carriers. Now as we mentioned before the greater the amount of mobile charge carriers in a material the better the electrical conductor. Now it's always better to refer to the electrons as a mobile charge carrier because other charged particles can produce a current. Now it's important to note that the electrons are mobile charge carriers because they contain a negative charge. Now you should know from your work in particle physics that electrons are very small fundamental particles which are part of the lepton family and have a negative charge. So they will have a charge of minus 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now it's in interested because charge is a fundamental property of a material, much like colour is, but you can't really visualise charge but only the behaviour it causes. So we can use the charge of an electron to force them to move in the same direction in a material. So electrical energy we can consider as the kinetic energy of mobile charge carriers moving in a particular direction. Now a current flows in a metal wire uh, when the mobile charge carriers in the metallic structure are all moving moving in the same direction. So naturally, you'll notice that the free electrons are all moving around randomly in the actual material. Now this is called electron drift and can happen naturally. But when the electrons are all moving in one particular direction, when the mobile charge carriers are all moving in one particular direction, you will achieve a current. Now the reason why mobile charge carriers can form a current is because they have a charge. Now electrical charge is a property of a particle which determines whether it moves in a current or not. So for example an electron has a negative charge. Now charge is a property due to the behaviour it exhibits. So all negatively charged particles repel all other negatively charged particles and all negatively charged particles attract positively charged particles. Now all charged particles will move in a current if there is a potential difference or EMF placed across them in an electrical circuit. So it's important to note that an object which has an electrical charge like a proton or an electron is affected by the electrical field and will also produce its own electrical field. So this will allow the charged object to move in a current. Now as the electrons have a negative charge it means that the electrons can move in a current. Now free protons and positive metal ions are further examples of these mobile charge carriers that can move in a current. Now as the electrons can move in a current we notice this more regularly because the, the free electrons are a small particle but free protons and positive metal ions can also move in currents but the force needed for them to do this is too large to achieve at room temperature because they have too much mass. 
Now, the SI unit of charge is the coulomb, where we say one coulomb is one amp second. So it's the charge passing a point in a wire when the current flows with one amp through the wire for one second. Now, one coulomb has been found to be the charge of 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So therefore, one electron has a charge of one over this value, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now, this charge of an electron is a value you're expected to memorize. Now, as we mentioned before, an object which has an electrical charge is affected by the electrical field and produces its own electrical field. So this makes a charged object move in a current. And we can use the definition of an electrical charge to understand this concept of an electrical field. Now, a field is a region of space where an object can be affected by a non-contact force. So this is a region of space where other charged objects can experience what we call an electrostatic force. So this therefore means that the electrostatic force is in fact non-contact. Now, as we said before, only charged objects can experience a non-contact force in an electrical field, which is why humans, which are normally neutrally charged objects, tend to very rarely experience the electrostatic force. Now, you can also consider a field to be a region of the space in which the exchange particle can travel in. Now, the exchange particles mediate any force in the universe, and the exchange particle needed for the electrostatic force is the photon. Now, we can visualize the effect of an electrical field with field lines. Now, these are drawn as straight lines from the objects with arrows on them showing their direction. Now, just to note, the phrases electrical fields, electrostatic fields, and electromagnetic fields are all interchangeable in this context. Now, any charged object inside the electrical field of this particular particle will feel the electrical force. The objects do not need to be touching. Now, as we note, the electron has a negative charge, so produce an electrical field, and these charged objects will emit and receive the photons as exchange particles to mediate the force. Now, the direction of the electrical field lines and the density of the electrical field lines are very important indicators of electrical properties. Now, a positively charged particle would move towards a negative electron. So you can see from this example that electrical field lines always show the path a positively charged particle would take if the particle was placed at that point, and this is a standard notation. So you can see here that for negatively charged objects, the field lines point toward the particle. Now, like we said, because the electrical field lines show the path a positively charged particle would take, it was placed at that point, and we know that in this instance, another positively charged particle will be moving away from it, it indicates that for positively charged objects, the field lines point away from the particle. Now, how close the electrical field lines are together, the density of the field lines shows how strong the electrical force is. So the denser the field lines, the stronger the force exerted. So where the field lines are closer together, you will receive a stronger electrical force. And when the field lines are more spread out, you'll receive a weaker electrical force. Now, there are two types of voltage in electrical circuits. There's the electromotor force, the EMF, and the potential difference, the PD. Now, the electromotor force is the energy supplied per the, as by the power source to each unit of charge, so to one coulomb, whilst the energy transferred from the charge to the output of the circuit is the potential difference. Now, in theory, you would say that the electromotor force would equal the potential difference, so be the input energy per unit charge would equal the output energy per unit charge, but there's also always some energy dissipated due to resistance, and we would also put that over the unit charge, so we will call that the lost volts. So the electromotor force, which is the input energy per unit charge, is equal to the output energy per unit charge, plus the energy dissipated from the circuit per unit charge. Now any source of electrical energy is an EMF source, so things like batteries and cells and power packs, and any source of electrical energy output is a potential difference transducer. So anything that provides an output to electrical energy has a potential difference. And the common name for these electrical circuit outputs is a transducer. Now we can show the difference between the voltages with the following. So you can see your battery here provides an EMF into the circuit and the two bulbs uh, have a potential difference out of the circuit. Now if there was no energy dissipated in the electrical wiring, then EMF in would equal PD out. Out, but there is energy dissipated in the M um, wiring, so therefore EMF in is equal to potential difference out plus waste energy dissipated. But we will call that in this instance the lost volt.
volts. Now this concept uh, which produces the waste energy in the electrical circuits is called the internal resistance. Now, we can place an electromotive force across a wire which can make the mobile charge carriers want to move in a particular direction. Now, the electrons want to move to the opposite charge, so to the positive, and move away from the same charge, the negative. So, what's important to note is that an EMF is provided by a battery or power pack or mains, and what happens is it tells us that the electrons are attracted towards the positive and they're repelled from the negative to produce uh, what will happen is your electrons to flow in the, or charge mobile charge carriers to move in the same direction so as a result you will get a current forming so the electromotor force will cause your mobile charge carriers to move in the same direction so we can say that for an electrical current to flow through a closed circuit the circuit must include a source of electromotive force so the electromotive force will cause a current to flow when there's a complete circuit so we would say that the electromotive force is the ability for the mobile charge carriers to do work in the electrical circuit. It's the amount of work done per unit charge inputted into the circuit. Now the potential difference is the ability for the charge carriers to do work. So again it's the amount of work done per unit charge outputted through a component in the circuit. So we can say quite readily that the potential difference and the electromotive force allow a current to flow in the conductor. Now current is the movement or flow of charge carriers through the conductor. The more charge carriers that flow the larger the current. The quicker the charge carriers flow, the larger the current, and current is measured in amperes. So we can summarize these concepts with the following picture. The current measures how the unit charge moves through the material. So the current measures the rate of flow of charge in your material. Now the electromotive force measures the energy needed to move the unit charge in the material. So it measures the energy given to each unit charge to move in your material, whilst the resistance measures the difficulty the charge has in flowing in the material. So the resistance is what we can call a proportionality constant between between the potential difference slash EMF and the current because it measures the difficulty of converting the energy given to the charged particle into movement. So the higher the resistance, the lower the current as the charge finds it more difficult to move because they would need more energy to move the charge through the material. So this leads to the following concepts in electricity. Current is the rate of flow of charge in the material, and it's measured in amperes. And it's, and it's given the equation current is equal to charge over time, or I is equal to delta Q over delta T. Now, charge is the property of a particle that will allow it to experience a non-contact electrostatic force and move in a current, and charge is measured in coulombs. So we can say charge is equal to current times by time, or delta Q equals I times by delta T. Now, the electromotive force is the work done per unit charge to make mobile charge carriers move in a current and it's measured in volts and we say that the electromotive force is the work done over the charge so emf is equal to work de delta w over delta q whilst potential difference is the work done per unit charge transferred out of the circuit when the mobile charge carriers move in a current and potential difference is measured in volts where potential difference is work done over charge or delta w over delta q now the Electromotive force is the work done per charge into the circuit and the potential difference is the work done per charge out of the circuit. If there was no internal resistance then the PD in EMF would be the same value. Now if we consider electrical current, electrical current flows out of the positive terminal of the cell and back into the negative terminal of the cell, which we call conventional current. But if you think about it, negatively charged electrons flow from the negative side of the cell to the positive side because opposites attract and, and the same air charges repel. So this is the direction that the electrons are actually moving through the conductor, which we call the electron flow. Now this happened is when we first discovered about about electricity, we did not realize that electrons were negatively charged. And since that point, we've not changed convention as particles other than electrons can form a current because like we said earlier, any charged particle can form a current. So for example, in humans, a current flows in your neurons due to positively charged sodium ions. So to clarify, 
Current is the rate of flow of mobile charge carriers in the circuit. Conventional current flows from positive to negative, and in the wires the electrons actually flow from negative to positive. And you can tell the difference between the two in your diagrams because the longer leg of the power supply is the positive and the shorter leg of the power supply is the negative. Now we can use both conventional current and electron flow because not all current is caused by free electrons moving. Current is caused by the flow of mobile charge carriers and free electrons are only one type of mobile charge carrier. In fact, there are actually other types, even though that the free electron is the most common type of mobile charge carrier. Now, in electrolytes and things like electrolysis and neurons in your body, current is caused by the movement of positive and negatively charged ions. So there are no free electrons in your nervous system acting to cause the electrical signals, only sodium and potassium ions. So current is due to the passage of these charged particles, and these charged particles are called charge carriers. So this means we have to use conventional current to indicate charge flow, as using electron flow would be inaccurate in some cases. Now finally, the type of material you can get, conductor, semiconductor or insulator, is determined by the number of mobile charge carriers that a material has in its structure. So if we consider a conductor, a conductor is a material with lots of possible mobile charge carriers in its structure. Now you can only refer to the mobile charge carriers as free electrons if it is a metal. Now it's important to note that for a conductor, when an electromotive force is placed across the conductor, the mobile charge carriers will move in a current. Now in an insulator, that is a material with very few mobile charge carriers in its structure. In fact, a perfect insulator has no mobile charge carriers, but these do not uh, exist in the universe. Now again, you can only refer to these mobile charge carriers as free electrons if the material is a metal. Now if you place an electromotive force force across an insulator, the mobile charge carriers will not move in a current. Now in a semiconductor, that's a material with a reasonable amount of possible charge carriers in its structure. But also very importantly, it can also change how many possible mobile charge carriers it has in its structure. So this change in the number of mobile charge carriers in a semiconductor is caused by carrying out work on that semiconductor. So if we just summarize the three types of materials. So for conductors, that's a material that has a great amount of mobile free charge carriers. So when an EMF is applied across a conductor, charge carriers will flow in a current. Now for an insulator, that's a material with very few mobile free charge carriers. So when an EMF is applied to the insulator, the, mo the charge carriers are unable to move together. And finally, a semiconductor is a material where the number of mobile free charge carriers can change. So when work is placed to a semiconductor, more charge carriers can break free and become mobile, increasing the current. So let's recap the physics of electricity. So current is the flow of charge carriers in the conductor. Current is measured on pairs, and conventional current flows from positive to negative, yet electron flow flows from negative to positive. Now many charge carriers are electrons, however there are other types, and current is equal to change in charge over change in time. For voltage, there are two types of voltage. The electromotive force is the work done into the circuit per unit charge and is supplied by batteries and power packs. Potential difference is the work done out of the circuit per unit charge and is used by things such as bulbs and heaters. Now both voltages are measured in volts and they're both given the equation work done over the, ch the charge. So there we say the EMF would equal your PD without the, the phenomenon of internal resistance. Now finally, Charge is that any charge object can be a mobile charge carrier. A charge object will emit and interact with electromagnetic fields, so therefore will send and receive photons. Now charge is measured in coulombs where charge is equal to current I times by the change in time T. So let's summarize what we've looked at in today's lesson. Electrical current is the rate of flow of charge and potential difference is the work done per unit charge. I is equal to delta Q over delta T, V is equal to W over Q, and resistance is equal to V over I. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the key terms of electrical circuits, differentiate between EMF and potential difference, and understand the difference between conventional current and electron flow in electrical circuits. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on an introduction to electricity, which is part of the electricity topic in AQA A-Level Physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.